Was there any alarm among the franchises when you heard the CSK thing coming out? I mean, as the boss of KKR, were you alarmed? Were you apprehensive? Did your players ask questions? I mean, did anybody sort of freak out? Hello and welcome to this edition of Free Hit on Gulf News. And my guest today is someone who I think is going to be a very, very important pivot for this IPL because we've seen the news coming out uh, in the early parts and someone who understands the bio bubble and the, the, the sanctity of the bio bubble better than most has done lots of work on this aspect and has been constantly telling me in private conversations how important it is to secure the bubble for a safe and secure tournament. Welcome Venki Mysore uh, to this show. Thank you very, very much for speaking to me. Thank you, Borea. Thanks for having me. When the news came out, my first thought was we've seen this in EPL, we've seen this in La Liga, we've seen this area. No panic, no alarm, but it tells you how important that bio bubble is. And I went back to the, to the discussion you had with me when you said even the owners cannot break that bubble. That is sacrosanct. It is almost sacred. Uh, thoughts on that? Having lived through this pandemic for now, what, it's at least six months, close to six months. Uh, I think if we step back for a second, even before we get into this sophisticated terminology like bio bubbles, I think at a simplistic level, we all should recognize the risk that's out there. And in the process, I think we've learned a lot over the last few months on how to protect ourselves. So in the context of what we know, if you look at staging a very high profile, uh, perhaps one of the biggest uh, uh, you know, extravaganzas if you can, in terms of cricket, an IPL type of tournament, it's extremely important to understand how one has to function within the parameters of the risk. And that is where this whole concept of bio bubble has come into play, which means that what you are effectively doing is recognizing how this uh, infection transmits itself. And in an environment where sports is being played, how do you protect yourself? So therefore, you're absolutely right. It is sacrosanct. And I think everybody has to be completely respectful of it and, and make sure that we don't underestimate under any circumstances. What's the message as the boss of KKR you've sent out to your team? I mean, they in Dubai, in the bio bubble, in Abu Dhabi, you are in Abu Dhabi, your team is in Abu Dhabi at the Ritz. I mean, that's something that, uh, uh, you know, we'll talk about. But what is the messaging, the early message that has gone from the CEO to every stakeholder, player, support staff, media, a social media team, everyone. What is the messaging that Venki Mysore has sent to the team? Two key messages that I give them. One is do not compare this scenario with anything that you have experienced in the past. I said this is a once in a century type of a scenario that we are all going through. So don't say, you know, this used to happen and that used to happen and therefore why am I not being allowed to do this and all that. I said, you know, please let's mentally prepare ourselves to say, you know, you can't even look back at any other paradigm. This is a new paradigm that we are in. Number two is, I said, do not under any circumstances underestimate the risk. No matter what SOPs are written, what document comes to you, what the government announces, all that. We all have to take responsibility, personal responsibility and accountability to ensure that we A, recognize that the risk that's out there and B, do everything that we know has to be done. Nothing is guaranteed in life. And so anything can happen, who knows? But to the extent that you can mitigate that, here are all the steps that we should be undertaking and we have done that. So these are the two messages. I sound, I'm beginning to sound like a broken record, but I don't mind it because this is the message that needs to go out to everybody. And I'm very happy to say that, you know, the, everyone has taken it in the right spirit. It is tougher in Abu Dhabi as we can discuss a bit more than it is perhaps in Dubai and in other places. And so the fact remains that uh, the, the team has been fantastic in terms of just accepting what we are going through and at the same time completely complying in all respects. Tell me the challenges uh, in Abu Dhabi, Venki, because a lot of your fans are here, I mean, uh, in India, even in the Gulf, will want to know it. The first impression when the tournament was going to be shifted to UAE was that they said there's no quarantining in UAE. UAE is completely open. And so we can all go there and you know, as long as we comply with the testing protocol, which means that you have to have a COVID negative report before you take off from wherever you're going, then you land in the airport, then you're tested again. As long as they're 
that was the initial impression that everybody had. But slowly but surely, we started realizing that there's a lot more to it. And there are differentiations between Abu Dhabi and Dubai, for example. For example, you know, Dubai does not have any mandatory quarantining requirement. So what people have, are supposed to do, we have all now heard that IPL teams that go there for the first six days, you have to be quarantined in your rooms, you have to have undergone three tests from the time you land, and only in the seventh day, you're allowed to come out and start practicing. That is a IPL uh, protocol. Now, you look at Abu Dhabi protocol. Abu Dhabi, after, you know, just before we landed or thereabouts, they, we landed on the 20th of August, and they announced that there's a 14-day quarantine, mandatory, in Abu Dhabi. So anybody who goes in, like a tourist who goes into Abu Dhabi, has to quarantine for 14 days. Dramatic difference to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Fortunately, what has happened is that we have been able to talk to the health ministries there and all the medical professionals. And I think they have understood that the biosecure bubble that we have created is a very, very stringent one. So to that extent, they have said that, okay, after six days, so now at least there's a little bit of a level playing field in saying that Dubai and Abu Dhabi, you go through the six days, you go through the testing, seventh day, you can start practicing. So they're allowing you to operate within the biosecure bubble. Was there any alarm among the franchises when you heard the CSK thing coming out? I mean, as the boss of KKR, were you alarmed? Were you apprehensive? Did your players ask questions? I mean, did anybody sort of freak out? Because it's very possible. I mean, that was my second question that, you know, in a quarantine set, set up, bio bubble set up, 80 odd days, what about mental health of the players or the staff? Have you given uh, any conscious thought to that? I don't think there was necessarily an alarm because, you know, we've been going through this for six months. And frankly, all of us, each of us in, the, in our respective lives, we know people who are very close to us or friends or acquaintances who have already been through this. I think it was more uh, a matter of, okay, now what? You know, if this happens within the biosecure bubble environment and happens to another franchise, so what, what happens next? You know, what are they going to do? I mean, now contact tracing, which means that does it mean that you have everybody who has come in contact with these people will also have to be caught? So those are the questions that came up more than anything else. I don't think anybody was necessarily alarmed. I also think that we had worked very hard to prepare our whole team mentally uh, on what to expect. I think a lot of it is about communication. And notwithstanding that, you know, who wants to sit in, the, in a hotel room, although the view is great, you know, we've got a very nice hotel with a very nice view and everything. And then... You know, we've tried to make it as comfortable for our team as possible, but nobody likes to sit in the room. So we have come up with some creative ways in which our team is very smart that way on how to keep Can everybody Can you give me a sense? Oh, uh, we, had a, we had a fantastic uh, quiz show on Zoom. And uh, it was so much fun, I tell you. I mean, there were some silly questions. There were some serious questions. There were some cricket questions. And uh, there were some Shah Rukh Khan, Bollywood questions. So... It was a lot of fun. And then uh, two days later, we did an amazing, I think, uh, untaxury type of uh, uh, an event for all of the people who were sitting in there. And I tell you, it was, it was hilarious. I joined in, obviously, but I told them uh, with a very straight face that I'm glad your main profession is to play cricket and not singing <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, it was... It was too hilarious to see. So, so who's, the, who's, who's the better singer and who won the quiz? Oh, I don't know about who's the better singer, but certainly uh, the, 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 the quiz was, I think, you know, people were quite smart. I must tell you, I, I, was, uh, I was quite uh, pleasantly surprised on uh, their extent of being aware of everything. I think from a singing standpoint, you know, the, the most uh, daring and the adventurous singer there is Rinku Singh in our group. My God, I mean, he started uh, not only singing everything and then but you know uh, i think shubman was a very good singer he came up with a few things in there and uh, also with the uh, rinku was with action you know he's standing on wow. his bed and no inhibition oh, wow. so it was it was too much fun it was too much fun and a lot of laughs you know when you when you do that i think it relaxes people and of course you know we've made all the arrangements with their television netflix this that whatever they need so that uh, people are, uh, you know, they have enough of an outlet. But fortunately, three days ago, the quarantine ended. They've started practicing and uh, they've gone three days in a row. So this is their biggest thing. I mean, being out there, you could see, you know, I saw videos of it and how happy they were to just be out there on the, mm -hmm. the 
ground. That, that, that was my next question. How happy were they? I mean, what was the first, first practice session and, you know, liberation? I think, you know, what happens, you know, as human beings, you know, uh, we know when we are deprived of something and then suddenly you get it, you realize how much you value it more and how much you, I, I think, I think there were two types of emotions. One is just a sense of, wow, okay, finally, we're out here. And the facilities were fantastic. And uh, notwithstanding all the things that they had to do, wear a mask and maintain social distance and sanitize and everything else, still just for them to hear the, the bat hitting the ball was, I think, music. I mean, this is what professionals do. It was also a sense of uh, uh, appreciation for what we are going through. And in the midst of all of these things, to be able to go out and do what they love doing. I think there was a great sense of... Uh, uh, gratitude, I would say. I, I, I generally sense that. I'm delighted to hear that, that you've taken care of the mental side of things. Uh, uh, you know, final two questions before I let you go. One, and this is a cricket question. I've watched every game of the CPL and I've watched everything to do with England. Tell me about Tom Banton and Sunil Narayan and how much has your smile widened when Tom Banton played that reverse switch hit for six and the scoops for six and Boy, I mean, this boy can, I mean, I, I saw him in the Vitality Blast. He was brilliant. But Tom Banton and Sunil Narayan. Well, you know, I mean, obviously we are going through CPL right now and TKR, knock on wood, fingers crossed. Six on you know, six. We, we have played six, one six. So couldn't be happier with that. I think everyone, again, you sense the same thing. You know, whatever I told you just now uh, holds true there as well. That people, as much as the challenges of quarantining and everything, which was tough, how mentally they are prepared and how they are focused on it has been fantastic to see Sunil bowling, batting. You know, Andre Russell, our, uh, you know, our head coach is there, Brendan McCullum. You know, he coaches TKR and he's going to coach the KKR. So the conversations that are going on, our analyst Srikant is there. So it's been fantastic in that sense. Watching... Uh, not only Tom Banton in that uh, rain-affected game, but also watching uh, you know, Morgan uh, play that knock uh, yes, you know, yes. just two days ago. I think it's uh, it just sort of uh, is a great sense of uh, satisfaction and something that we're really looking forward to. Obviously, there you know Banton is like an emerging star, and Morgan is uh, is is just an unbelievable individual, a leader, and a and a player. And all of these conversations had gone into our thinking when the auction happened. But the auction seems like it is. It happened so long ago, back in December 19. To see them, you know, following through on everything that we believe that they can come and do, uh, has been uh, fantastic. So fingers crossed. Right now, we we have, everyone has all the planes have landed except the CPL plane and uh, England and Australia plane. So the CPL plane will land on, I think, uh, 11th of September. That's the plan after the finals in CPL in Abu Dhabi, I mean. And then the England-Australia plane will land on the 17th after their final ODI on 16th of September. So when all of that comes in and they go through their quarantine and all the tests come back negative. So I was jokingly telling someone this emoji is something that is now a good sign. When, when test ah. results are coming, when it says like this, we're very happy. So, I think we'll be very relieved when, when the whole uh, squad congregates and I think that'll happen, you know, God willing, on 17th of September. And then it's uh, off to the races and, you know, be prepared and, and, and uh, you know, we start, we start our campaign. So, really looking forward to that. Couldn't be happier. You've been in charge for <clears throat> now more than a decade and you, you transformed it for KKR and I'm putting it on record. Tough calls. I mean, whether it's the sort of call, whether it's plenty other calls, making it a professional outfit. You've been a champion. And tell me, how important will this one be? I mean, this is not going to be another one next year. I mean, this pandemic is not going to be the same. There will be vaccines. There will be therapies. This is, as you said, once in a century, once in a generation, once in our lifetimes, hopefully. So if you win this one, it will be a real special one. How important is this for you? Oh, well, you know, I mean, you have to say winning is... Uh... I mean, it's the ultimate goal every team starts with. But uh, I think you start off the season and this particular season, you know, if there was a wish list, first thing you start saying is that the whole season should be uneventful, no incidences of any sort. And then we kind of go through it. It's all about cricket, no other fanfare around the tournament this time. And uh, it should all happen properly. Every team starts off, I imagine, at least we do, to say that, you know, we have to earn the right to compete. And when I make that statement to the team, I said, how do we earn the right to compete is by 
first of all, being in the top four. You know, so you, that is the first goal that you set for yourself. That by being in the top four, any one of those four can win the championship. And then, of course, you know, you, you have your secondary goal of saying it will be ideal to be in the top two and get two shots and go into the final. And then, of course, you know, once you go to the final, then obviously you want to bring the silverware home. But good vibes, I must say, because a lot of our boys who were there even in 2014, they remember yeah. Abu Dhabi start at the same hotel. And uh, one or two of them told me that it, is, it happens to be the same room as well. So it's interesting. So all the, the vibes are good. I think people are, uh, the, the team is in a good frame of mind. Uh, I'm very optimistic. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be a very unusual season. But I, as I always say, IPL is one of these things where until the first ball is bowled, there's so much noise happening around it. But once the first ball is bowled, then the focus shifts completely to cricket. And I'm looking forward to that on September 19th when the season starts. And then hopefully we'll, uh, you know, we'll have a little bit of the rub of the green as well, but quite excited about it and can't wait for it to start. It's been an absolute pleasure as always to have you on my show, uh, thank you, my sir. I mean, I just hope there will be more occasions right through this season where you are on uh, this show of mine and we'll celebrate uh, KKR together, celebrate you together. It's been a challenging few months to be able to put this uh, show on for each one of us, uh, for your fans. I'm sure you will connect with them like you've already told me in other forums. So plenty in, in store for you. So challenging times at the same time, exciting times. So on my wish list to have you more, to have your players on this show. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Gorya. It will be a pleasure. Thank you so much for your kind wishes.